Say again, uh, Gemini 5. Yeah, that's on stage two. Roger, you lost hips on stage two. The air was fair at Cape Kennedy, lacy clouds in a warm August sky, as Gemini 5 took off for space, where there is no weather at all. The only problem, a leaky fuel cell threatening to cut their flight short at the start. It didn't. But out in the Atlantic, something else was brewing. A rising breath of wind, soon to be known as Betsy. August 27th. At Florida and island bases, Navy, Weather Bureau, and Air Force planes are warming up to their daily task. 180 miles overhead, Gemini 5 is whirling around the world in its sixth day of orbit. The astronauts are still alone in space, but not quite alone. From the first day on, they've been sharing the sky with Tyros weather satellites, circling endlessly, clicking their pictures back to Earth. And at mid-morning on the 27th, both Tyros 10 and a Navy weather plane make a discovery. Tropical depression at 13 degrees north latitude. The astronauts degrees. see it next. Okay. Same day. Uh, do you have any sort of a report over that tropical depression? I saw we passed right over it. It is a rather large storm with uh, heavy cumulus activity. We could see uh, air-to-ground lightning even in the daytime. Uh, that's the name of that's Betsy, in case you haven't been told about it. A hurricane's born and christened Betsy. And in two places, the news spells trouble. The National Hurricane Center in Miami, where Chief Forecaster Gordon Dunn is checking first reports, and Houston Control for the space flight, scheduled to splash down Sunday, right in the path of the storm. First victim of Betsy, Gemini 5. Its eight-day flight is cut one orbit short. The landing area is changed. Cooper and Conrad splash down safely into a sunny sea. For a week, Betsy wanders north toward the Bahamas. In Nassau, American tourists are pouring off the Yarmouth Castle on a final fling, sightseeing, souvenirs, shopping. And in the native churches, only a few bother to give thanks that another hurricane's passed them by as Betsy swings by safely to the east, heading north toward Cape Hatteras. Florida relaxes too, the start of Labor Day weekend, a time for sea and sun. But for the Weather Bureau and the hurricane hunters, it's no holiday at all. In 10 days now, Betsy's already traveled 2,000 miles, past Barbados and the Grenadines, the Windward and Leeward Islands, skirting Cuba, Puerto Rico, the Bahamas. Now 300 miles north, she runs into westerly trade winds, does a lazy loop-de-loop, -loop, then stalls. Probable course, still north and west toward Hatteras, New Jersey, or New England. But bad news wherever it hits. By now, it's packing 125 mile an hour winds swirling around an enormous eye. Suddenly on Sunday night, Betsy runs head on into a high pressure ridge, turns into a Yankee hurricane, traveling south and coming fast back toward the Bahamas. Monday night, the wall cloud rips over the out islands and into Nassau, grinding and tearing at the town for nearly 15 hours. Then it turns toward the mainland. Hurricane flags are flying now from Key West to Cape Kennedy. Lupcon 3 effective, beginning over 700 hours this morning. Lupcon 3 effective, beginning In Miami, hours the county's Civil Defense Emergency Operating Center, designed to direct government services in either natural disaster or enemy attack, all forces have been on emergency alert since early Labor Day morning. Small craft warning, winds may reach hurricane force and squalls by early Tuesday evening. 
All vessels in the area of hurricane display should seek safe harbor. For the first time in local history, Weather Bureau warns that Key Biscayne and Miami Beach will be underwater. Residents are advised to get out now. All groceries, hardware stores, and lumber yards now closed for the holiday are urgently requested to reopen so the public can lay in food and emergency supplies. If you're boarding up, be sure to use strong lumber and nail securely. Check trees and shrubbery. Remove coconuts from nearby palm trees. Along the Gold Coast, hotel swimming pools are suddenly deserted as advanced winds begin to come in. But on the beaches, youngsters are finding the best surfing since Hurricane Carol. Fair winds for the skateboard sailors, too. Not so good for last minute choppers. By nightfall, winds have turned to driving rains. And at Miami International Airport, normally one of the busiest in the world, the last bird of passage has flown. Workers are still tying down traffic lights, making other last minute preparations. All storm shelters, repeat, all storm shelters are now open. If you feel that your home is insecure, then go to your nearest Red Cross emergency shelter. Gale force winds are striking now from Palm Beach to the tip of the Keys. In the six counties of southern Florida, more than 18,000 people are crowded into the Red Cross shelters, just waiting for it to happen. Betsy's here. Gusts now topping 100 miles per hour. Tides three feet above normal in the greater Miami area. And escape routes will be cut off shortly. Unidentified female reported electrocuted by a fallen power line. Rescue squad to 1721 Northwest 17th Place. Family now reports water swirling around the field. In the luxury hotels along Miami Beach, water's already pouring over the welcome mats. Our mobile unit has just reported fish swimming down Collins Avenue. Fish and eels swimming right down the main drag of Miami Beach. Conservation 85 to Marathon. Could you advise if State Road 5 is passable to Isla Mirada, south of the Key Largo area? The last report I have is the road is washed out in two places. A long night for civil defense. Now all the dull, quiet things done over the years, the pre-hurricane drills, the planning and preparation for any kind of disaster, the coordinated efforts of all the government and voluntary agencies are finally paying off. 740 Northwest 8, 2 Street, roof blown off a house. There are injuries. Some hotels on beach badly damaged. Some three degrees, several houses. Betsy, with her hurricane winds, is on the Florida mainland. She is also on Key Largo. At dawn, the eye of the hurricane crosses Key Largo, heading west. Hurricane winds will continue for hours, and so will calls for help. Flooding in the Arvada Parkway area, you need some amphibious ducks. Right, are there any injuries involved? Only evacuation. Angela to Southwest 5th Avenue and 3rd. Four families marooned. As Betsy blows by Florida, she leaves her mark behind. Damage, around 140 million. Several dead. 4,000 homes wrecked or flooded out. Plus smaller losses. On Riviera Beach, a bigger whale's been grounded. A foreign freighter driving in blindly through the night. The Yarmouth Castle's been a little luckier. The Bahamas cruise ship has ridden out the storm at sea and put back safely into Miami next morning. She'll sail another day. 
the hurricane roars on, still hunting for land. And 900 miles of coastline ahead to choose from. All the way to Texas, where the astronauts are safely home, but beginning to wonder if they're being followed. But early Wednesday morning, Hurricane Betsy is taking a more northwesterly turn and is now heading directly for the Louisiana coast. The weather New Orleans Weather Bureau picks it up now, and warnings go out from civil defense in the state capital at Baton Rouge. Our near the flying coastal areas should be evacuated early today, before escape routes are cut off by rising waters. Offshore oil rigs are abandoned. Ships head into port. Cars come streaming up from the Delta. A quarter of a million refugees, many of them heading for New Orleans. For New Orleans itself, there's literally no place to go. It's surrounded by river, lake, and swampland. So the town boards up and battens down in the shelter of its levees. Already, its Civil Defense Emergency Operating Center is manned by nearly 200 people, representing all the city's emergency services. Near dusk, Mayor Victor Skiro comes down the stairs to hear disturbing news. Station. Be advised that extremely dangerous patch she has headed toward New Orleans. Curious flooding may occur just south of Lake Pontchartrain and Jefferson and New Orleans parishes as a strong northerly winds force water over the seawall. Chief, we're expecting 12 feet of water in this area, over the lakefront. Charlie Erdman, the city civil defense director. The force is distributed down we get in shallow water in the way... What of our preparations in this area? Now, I would suggest this, that we move, evacuate these people from this parish line to the Wrigley's and from the lakefront to Florida Avenue. Lake Pontchartrain the huge, shallow, treacherous lake lying just north of New Orleans. If the eye passes east of the city, the hurricane's counterclockwise winds would scoop the lake clear over the levee. The mayor's warning goes out. Now we are providing buses. If you look out on the West End Boulevard, Pontchartrain Boulevard, you'll find public service buses. In one place particularly, the news strikes home. The Berrios home on Wingate Drive, just a few blocks south of the lakefront. For nearly six years now, Jean Berrios has been half paralyzed by polio, dividing his days and nights between an iron lung and a rocking bed. Both needed nearly every minute of the day to keep the breath of life in his body. If hurricane winds knock out the power lines, the equipment will stop. Or if water starts pouring over the levee, he'll have no chance of escape. Hello, Mama. Let me talk to Henry a minute. Yeah. Mrs. Berrios, calling her brothers for help. Hello, Henry. Well, listen, this is my moment. I have to have some way of getting uh, Jean to the hospital this afternoon, and I was wondering if you and maybe one of the other boys could help, you know? You know, as soon as possible. Yeah, well, that'll be okay as soon as he gets home from work, but I want you to hurry up now because it's important. Other distress calls are beginning to pour into the emergency the operating center. nurses. If you want any available for duty tonight to report to 2000 Tulane Avenue. You need gasoline at you St. Are providing buses? Run the auxiliary generator? All right, we'll try to get you 50 gallons. You mean your wife's having a baby right now? Can't you get her to a hospital? No, no, hold on. We'll get a doctor on the line. The doctor's Rodney Jung the city health director, being called on to tell a frightened young father how to deliver his very first baby without training or forceps or fainting. Too late, under rising winds, the phone line's already gone dead. Time's growing short. On Wingate Drive, Mona Berrios is getting her husband ready for the trip to the hospital out of the bed and into the wheelchair, getting him dressed and worrying over what's keeping her brothers. When will they get off work and get here? Finally, time to go, out toward the door, and then goodbyes to Cindy, the baby of the family, his sons and his wife. To escape the flood, they'll all be going to a sister's apartment in another safer part of town the Gentilly section in the southeast quarter of New Orleans. 
Jean is heading for Charity Hospital. Betsy roars down on her third swinging town, closes up Bourbon Street tighter than an eight o'clock curfew. And unpredictable to the very last, she veers again. The 930 Weather Bureau Bulletin says the eye may now pass west of the city instead of east. A last minute reprieve for the lakefront area. Probably bad news somewhere else. Fire alarm to 306. by fall of trees. You will have to handle alone. No one else can reach you. Have you heard anything about that woman in labor? No, Have you heard anything about that woman in labor? No, sir. No word yet, but bad news elsewhere as the hurricane comes sweeping up the delta. Well, I don't know how long we can stay on this line. All right, just tell us what the situation is well, right now. We're in complete darkness here now. The eye of this thing, or the most, or the greater part of it, must be right here, right now. Because there's no surging in here. There's one continuous blow. And uh, I'm telling you, she's a blowing and she's a shaking. At 11.46, all power fails at the New Orleans Weather Bureau, and the wind gauge blows off the roof. Falling trees are knocking out telephone lines all over town but not till Dr. Jung finally gets the word he's been waiting for. Oh, Dr. Jung, that woman you were worried about had her baby and both are doing well. Fine. By midnight, Betsy's overwhelming the city. Gusts are reaching 150 miles an hour, and all the church bells in town are tolling wildly in the wind. Baton Rouge is next in line. The winds in the Baton Rouge area are increasing in velocity to hurricane force with winds up near 100 miles per hour by 1.30 a.m. In the state emergency operating center, Governor John McKithen and his staff, disaster coordinator Leon Gary, and civil defense director Marshall Capel are working with Red Cross, Public Health, and Salvation Army, the welfare groups, and National Guard. Emergency calls are pouring in from all over the state including one from National Guard headquarters at New Orleans. Jackson Barracks to Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. Flooding now at Jackson Barracks. You're, you're kidding. No one's kidding. Betsy's bringing in danger from a totally unexpected quarter. Her winds are pushing a 16-foot wall of water out of Lake Bourne in the Gulf, the greatest tidal surge in Louisiana history. Sweeping over the Delta, Plaquemines Parish, St. Bernard, topping the highest levees, roaring across the industrial canal into the southeast section of New Orleans. No one knows the full size of the disaster yet. In Betsy's wake, there's only darkness, confusion, and death. Daybreak and devastation, and the church bells are quiet now. Hurricane winds have done their worst. The tidal surge has topped them. Fatality list is as follows. 25-year-old Mrs. Joanne Mayu, her body was found in the Franklin Avenue ditch. She was swept away by floodwaters in the flooded area. People are still being pulled off roofs and out of the water. Another small Dunkirk. I saw just a big wave coming right at the house. It looked like it's taller than the house. And I heard from my husband, and he ran. My brother-in-law called, but thank God he got the last call through. And he screamed, tell him to get out. The levee broke. Well, we swam down the apartment. It was flooded to the second floor, and they lifted us into the boat. The water was coming that high. Another 25,000 refugees to swamp already overcrowded shelters. Well, you seem pretty happy uh, for the... the oh, I got my four precious possessions out, my children. 
Have you ever seen anything like this never before? Never have seen anything like this before. No, sir. Never have. And I hope I never see it again. My children are singing down at my sister laws because I don't want to bring them in here. It's that bad. Oh, By mid-afternoon, the presidential plane is on its way from Washington, swinging out over the Gulf, then up the Delta, flying low, following Betsy's trail of destruction. Grand Isle, where the hurricane first made landfall, nothing left. Up the Mississippi, houses swept five miles from their front door steps. Levees strewn with battered ships and barges, more than 450 beached or sunk. And missing near Baton Rouge, somewhere on the river bottom in Mississippi mud, barge MTC-602, laden with 600 tons of deadly liquid chlorine enough to produce more poison gas than both sides used in all of World War I, and much more than enough to wipe out Baton Rouge. At five o'clock, Air Force One lands at New Orleans, bringing the president, his aides, and leaders of the Louisiana congressional delegation to survey the damage, see what needs to be done. In one old grade school near the Industrial Canal, not meant for use as a shelter at all, they find 3,000 refugees from the flood and only four young volunteers on hand to help. How much training have you had for this type of work? Well, about 15 minutes, I guess. <laughs> the president declares Louisiana and Florida both disaster areas tells the Office of Emergency Planning to coordinate federal assistance. More than a million two hundred thousand people from nearly every agency of the national government will be involved. Down the Delta, roads are flooded out, but 2,500 National Guardsmen come in by river steamer to begin rescue operations. Coast Guard helicopters are flying more than 2,000 missions. The military choppers are matching them. Red Cross is flying in staff from all over the country. And with them, to help in this overwhelming task, come hundreds of health and welfare workers on loan from other states and cities, the other voluntary agencies. Captain Ward of the Salvation Army has placed an urgent request for clothing of any kind, especially children's clothing, blankets, diapers, food, and money, to purchase clothing. A refugee city is being created at the Algiers Navy facility. More than 12,000 people will be bedded down, fed and cared for at the Algiers Naval Station by nightfall. The Army is providing field kitchens, bedding, and latrines. And the Red Cross is uh, providing the transportation to these evacuees. Officials of Plaquemine Parish have requested that all persons entering Plaquemine Parish by boat must stop at Bell Chase School for typhoid shots. The typhoid shots are necessary due to a large amount of dead animals in the area. Charity Hospital is in dire need of blood. Blood donors can give blood at Charity Hospital anytime from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. The clinics will be closed and there will be no visiting hours at Charity Hospital. No visitors and no word at all to tell Gene Barrios if his family's even alive. But in the Gentilly section, the phone lines are down. The water's still up, lapping at the door sills. For three straight days, the whole Berrios clan has been marooned in a small first floor apartment, short on food and short on room. Eight adults and 14 little monsters with nothing else to do with their time. Children! But relief's in sight. Well, Hurricane Betsy's finally blown itself out. She's down to rainstorm intensity now and is heading northeast through Tennessee toward New York. And I hope it still has enough rain in it when it gets to New York to help them alleviate their water shortage. And finally, the pumps are taking effect. In Gentilly, at least, the water level's falling. And for the first time in four days, it's possible for Mona Berrios to get out. Call Charity Hospital. After all the worry, the family's safe and coming home tomorrow.
so life begins again. People starting all over. Just how bad is it with you? Well, I'll tell you, we're down, but we're not out. You're not out. That's right. What happened to you personally? Uh, what about your family? I mean, everybody They're got all out. safe. Uh -huh. And we'll re rebuild. You will rebuild? Oh, yeah. We don't... You, you don't think this is knock you out by it? No, indeed. We're going to build the levees higher uh -huh. and have a prettier community. How do you feel about it? I always did want to redecorate. Did you? Yeah. A man who dealt with a dozen major disasters said it. There isn't a city in the world that could handle anything as big as this alone. It's just overwhelming. But there isn't a city in the world that may not face the same sort of thing someday. Major disaster in one form or another and have to be organized to meet it, using resources from many public and private agencies. And at New Orleans City Hall, they're working around the clock, civil government in emergency, meeting the needs of its people, fighting a thousand problems at once. Welfare assistance for victims of the flood. Locating medical supplies, arranging to fly in a civil defense emergency hospital unit, answering emergency calls for food, water, sanitation equipment, for trucks and ducks to handle relief operations. The endless job of cleanup, fumigation, inspection. At the Civil Defense Office, the coordinating point for this kind of planning, the lights burn late. An endless string of coffee cups, and still no sleep in sight. Betsy's final bill won't be in for months. The chlorine barge near Baton Rouge will take a million dollars to raise. Corps of Engineers supervising the salvage job. Army, Red Cross, and Civil Defense evacuating the sick and aged in case anything goes wrong and gas starts sweeping the city. The others can take care of themselves, and they do. On November 10th, two months to the day since the hurricane hit, they bail out of town in a hurry. But 602 will rise again, and so will Louisiana. And Betsy, long gone. After 16 days and 3,000 miles, whistling out through the woods of northern Louisiana, Arkansas, Tennessee, to die next day in a simple whirl of dust. The danger over at last. Till the next one comes along.